Hi guys, another Tuesday, another set of balance and project changes. And let me tell you, they are amazing. They may well be the best changes so far. Everything is on point, opens up loads of really awesome spots. I will be making a lot of videos for these spots. I think I'm planning eight new video guides based on the spots that were changed today. So definitely stay tuned for those. Some really, really good stuff. So big shout out to Tipsoft, really good job. Um, yeah, and we have one more set of balance changes in two weeks on the 28th of May, and that should be it. We'll see what tips off say at the end of it. Maybe they'll be doing more balancing. It's It's been, in my opinion, very successful, so I really wish to see more. Uh, but yeah, let's wait and see, and let's just dive into what's been changed today. So first of all, we had some changes to Warzone 1, 2, and 3, uh, following on from the previous set of changes, and they're not terribly exciting but they just good numerical changes improving some of the experience so for example in warzone one we're seeing uh, across the board about a 10 percent experience increase in addition some uh you know mechanics improvements removing mana drain uh, removing retreating they've even changed the armor deal to a melee fighter which is great because i don't know why that was a ranged monster in the first place some lowering of fire sensitivity basically improving fire damage against those monsters just in general pretty good changes just to make this place a little bit more huntable so i'll be checking it out i think it might almost be you know sort of a b8 here right now in warzone 2 kind of similar we're seeing about a 10 percent increase across the board as well for those monsters some removals of mana drain and reducing the melee debuff so again Pretty good stuff. We're also seeing some increased monster den monster density in Warzone 2, so that should also be a, a nice buff. Whether this will be meta now, again, I don't know. I'm actually going to check this spawn out and make a video guide. I think it's probably going to be all right now. And same story for Warzone 3. Increased monster density, increased experience across the board around 10%. Removal of some of those, uh, you know, drunken debuff, shielding debuff, mana drain. So it uh, should be much more easy to maintain your mana at these spots now, uh, which is great for EK. EK struggles with mana when there's a lot of mana drain. Uh, and I think you might not even need the dr uh, Dwarven Ring here anymore in Warzone 3 with the drunken removed from those monsters, which meaning, means, you know, you can have the extra defense for like a Spirit Fawn Ring, or you can have some extra damage for from uh, like a skill ring as well. So that's also actually a pretty strong, pretty strong change. So overall, I would say was on one, two, and three. There were some good changes in the last set of uh, changes, but now they're really being pushed pushed forward into being actually huntable. After the changes three weeks ago, they were about, you know, sort of C, B tier. I think those spots are now becoming sort of B, A tier uh, for a lot of ranges. I think Paladin solo, EK solo, some sort of duos uh, can definitely make those places work. I will check them out and make separate videos for them in the coming days. Moving on, we have some changes to Warzone 4, 5, and 6, and especially Warzone 4 and 5, the changes are amazing. In my opinion, the changes are... I. I I don't want to say it, but I feel like they've almost overbuffed maybe some of these respawns because Warzone 4 and Warzone 5, in my opinion, had a pretty reasonable uh, experience and loot rate for some sort of level ranges. And now, let's look at Warzone 4. They've increased the experience from the boss, so that's that's good, but that's not really much to talk about. But they've increased the experience of Chasm Spawn and Drill Worm by approximately 30%, which is really high. Like this place, like I say, it was kind of all right already for like a level 300 EK or Paladin with a 30% buff. Those places will actually be pretty damn good now. I still don't think they're going to be like S tier, um, but I expect those places to be very huntable and quite popular I, I would expect this place to become somewhere around a tier for like a level 300 paladin or 300 ek in that rival range and i will also be making a guide for wars on four and wars on five in the coming days similar story here in wars on five again the increase to the experience of the boss which is nothing really too much to talk about but still welcome and then we see a few changes first of all cave devourer has like an experience like 40 percent experience buff tunnel tyrant about a 25 percent experience buff in addition they both have increased drop chance of suspicious devices which at a surface kind of makes it seem like the profit will be better uh, but ultimately i think this might just mean that the price of suspicious devices goes down especially as these places become more popular and more huntable so i don't actually think profit will necessarily change if that makes sense i think the profit will be the same you'll just drop more suspicious devices but they'll probably be worth a little less than they were before these changes so most of all i think this is kind of a, just an, uh, an improvement to the um, experience rate but the experience rate changes here are crazy like it's like 30 35 percent experience rate 
uh, for a place that, again, you know, it wasn't F tier. This place was like a D tier. And now if it gets a 30% experience buff, I'm, I'm again expecting this place to be somewhere around like A tier for uh, level 300 to 350. I'll be making a guide to this one uh, very shortly as well. And one final thing to mention is that they changed the high voltage elemental fire sensitivity from 0 to 100, which is also a nice and welcome change because what was really annoying in this place is that if you needed kind of three different elemental weapons, you wanted to use ice against the tunnel tyrants, fire against the cave devourer, and then like a poison or death or physical against the voltage elemental. So it was kind of awkward. You didn't really know what to use. Uh, now it's pretty obvious that you should just be using fire when you hunt, when you're sort of in the cave devourer and elemental pulls and ice when you're hunting that tunnel tyrant. And so really great changes, I think, for Warzone 4 and Warzone 5. I really think those places will become very popular uh, for the sort of mid-level ranges. Obviously, it won't make a difference for like a level 1000, but they will be definitely much more huntable for like a level 3, 400. In addition to this, we also have uh, some changes to Warzone 6, uh, about a 10% experience buff to Diamond and Deep Worm, uh, which is welcome. Um, I do actually expect that uh, Warzone 6 on the whole, might end up being a little bit worse than it used to be. Because Warzone 6 was always about the profit, not the experience. Even this 10% extra experience at Warzone 6, um, it's not going to make it an experience spot. There was barely any experience here in the first place. So it's still not an experience spot, but the profit will probably go down because of the increased drop rate of suspicious devices from Warzone 4 and 5, and therefore the reduced worth and value of suspicious devices means that the profit from Warzone 6, without any changes to the drop rate here, as you can see, probably means the profit will actually go down at Warzone 6. So I, uh, I'm not sure about the Warzone 6 changes myself, 10% experience buff, great, but as this wasn't an experience place in the first place, I'm not sure if that's enough. I actually kind of think Warzone 4 and Warzone 5 will now be better than Warzone 6 overall. Just my thoughts. Uh, I'm happy to be proved wrong, but that's that's what I think. Uh, now, moving on, we had some changes to in Oromond. First of all, we had some changes to Seacrest Grounds. Um, they've got some increased monster density. I went to check it out. I didn't notice too much increased monster density. I felt like the monster density was already pretty good there from the changes in the previous patch. Um, but they keep kind of bumping their numerical values. As you can see, the Seacrest Serpent now has uh, over 10% experience buff and increased energy sensitivity to 100 and also the earth sensitivity. I'm starting to think that Seacrest Grounds might also have the niche soon. I think uh, a level 200 EK, level 200 EK around this level range, uh, Seacrest Grounds might be pretty good. I'll also be checking that out on my low level EK and making a video on that as well. Um, not sure whether that's going to be quite so good yet. But I think it's got potential. It's starting to get potential. The density in some of those rooms is absolutely mental. Uh, and moving on, we've had changes to Oromond Mountain Hideout. So they've increased the monster density. Uh, Oromond Mountain Hideout, again, for those of you who don't know, this is the hidden dark trails hunting ground where you have like the Minotaurs on the plus one. You've got the Furies, Nightmares and Spectres on level zero. And then you've got like a bunch of undead creatures on minus one and minus two, like Lost Souls, Betrayed Raves, Undead Dragons and Dark Torturers. Um, and I think in this patch today, they focused on the minus one and minus two sections because I went to run that and I noticed increased monster density there. In addition to this, you can see that they've changed the Betrayed Wraith energy sensitivity from 0 to 90, so you can actually use energy on them now. And they've increased the ice, and sensitiv ice sensitivity of Furies from 70 to 95, which again means ice is pretty damn good on Furies now. So um, I actually went to check it out, and I think the density is very good now. I actually think that her place is huntable now like a minus one minus two loop uh, the main issue with this spot at the moment is it that you just run into a dead end uh, it really needs the treatment of getting like a teleport at the end to bring you back to the front in the same way that the war zones got so i'll be making that comment on the uh, tibia.com post but other than that i think it's pretty damn good um it felt like energy was the best element to me when i hunted there for a few minutes um but i'll be checking that out more thoroughly later on in the next few days and making a video guide on this place as well because i think it's also huntable now for both paladins and eks uh, and this was like a sort of totally forgotten respawn i don't think anybody ever hunted there so it's great that this place is going to open up uh, saying that i don't think it's going to be like amazing okay just just to warn you i don't think this oromon mountain hideout even with those changes is going to be like a tier uh, but I think it's going to be somewhere on the verge of like a B slash C tier. Uh, but it might well be the best place for Undead Dragon Bestiary uh, going forward, which is which is pretty awesome because Undead Dragon Bestiary is always pretty tough. So I think that might be the big highlight of the Ormond Mountain Hideout changes. 
Now moving on, we have some other great changes. We have changes to lower spike. So this is the lowest level of the spike. Uh, and this place was absolute nightmare to hunt in the past. Uh, they had weird dodgy sensitivities on those monsters. They had yeah, invisibility, mana drain. Uh, they had dragon lords there which threw uh, fire bombs. And the monsters wouldn't walk over them. They would walk around them. It was really, really awkward to hunt here. So a lot of these changes here from tips of focus on removing this awkwardness and annoyingness. Uh, all the, these monsters will now walk over the fire fields. Other than massive earth elemental, which I suppose kind of makes sense. It wouldn't really make sense for an earth elemental to walk over fire fields. Uh, but they've removed the mana drain damage. They've removed the invisibility. Uh, and they've also bumped the experience rate by approximately 20% across the board, it seems. So I think this one might actually be really cool now as well. I am envisioning a level 150 to a level 200 ek with ranged etc um being able to pull some good numbers here in lower spike i'll be checking that out as well in my low level ek and making a video on it as well i'm anticipating it being pretty good um and this place was always pretty good for like a mage uh, i think like a level 200 druid or sorcerer will also be able to make this hunt a little bit more worthwhile now so i'll be checking that out on my sorcerer at some point as well and finally, the last set of changes, which I think will be ignored by a lot of people, but I think this has also got its uh, place for being quite impactful. Uh, so middle spike, for those of you who don't know, is the, obviously the middle level of the spike. And this one is only available from level 50 to level 80. And I've hunted here before on like a new server and like a team hunt, four man team hunt. And this place has crazy experience. It is probably the highest density slash experience ratio a hunt in the game for this sort of level range the main problem with this place was that crystal crushers were like out of this world dps wise i i don't know what tips were thinking when they created crystal crushers but they were able to like one shot 500 damage a level 80 mage so it, this place was basically unhuntable uh, outside of some sort of duo you know ek ed where the ek was tanking everything it was really really hard to hunt here but as you can see, this keynote here, right at, the right at the bottom, Crystal Crusher reduced DPS. I'm going to test this out. But if this reduced DPS is really significant, if they reduced it by like, I don't know, 50%, which would be fine because that's how strong they were, this place becomes S tier for level 50 to level 80. Now, I know this probably doesn't affect many people. Most of you won't care because you're not in that level range. But I find that exciting. I find this interesting. I think new worlds, let you hit level 50 at upper spike, and you move on to middle spike and you just you just stay in this spot to level 80 and it's amazing i really think uh if crystal crusher dps was reduced significantly enough this will be a really top tier spot on new servers on like new or uh, so you know uh, strong weak uh, low level characters um really great um they've also increased the experience as you can see of the earth elemental by 20 percent of the mutated bat approximately 20 percent as well add increased ice sensitivity of them which i actually this part i find kind of weird i don't i don't know why it increased the ice sensitivity because i think you still want to use fire in the in middle spike i think everything's weak to fire so i don't really see the direction of the ice sensitivity changes but uh, who knows, maybe there'll be some other changes in two weeks time around this area, which will make it make more sense. Anyway, that's everything from today. And honestly, I think almost every change is great. I think the only change that may possibly miss is this Warzone 6. Like I mentioned, the experience increase is fine, but it's not really exper an experience spot anyway. While I expect the profit to fall down at Warzone 6. So I think Warzone 6 it was never really that popular in the first place, and now I think it's just going to be worse. While all the other changes, Warzone 5, Warzone 6, uh, sorry, Warzone 4 and Warzone 5, spe 5 specifically, those are going to become much better. Warzone 1, Warzone 2, and Warzone 3 still remains to be seen how good they are, but I think they have potential now to be to be pretty damn good, so I'll be checking that those out for sure. And potentially we have some cool changes in Lower Spike and maybe Ormond Mountain Hideout as well. So I... I'm super happy, uh, really good changes overall. Looking forward to testing those out. Like I mentioned, I'm planning a lot of videos from based on these changes. Uh, those changes are really good for like my level characters. So I'm probably gonna be posting like a video every day for the next week on some of these new spots. So stay tuned. And yeah, big shout out to Tipsoft again, loving the changes. Please continue doing more of this. Please don't wait another five years before another rebalance project because it's great. It's making loads of old school spots more popular. So really happy to see that. And yeah, thanks very much for the effort, Sipsoft. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.